In this video, we look at another technique for adding up numbers, numbers that are arranged in a specific way. And uh, this method is attributed to the mathematician Euclid. So we need to find the sum of 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64. Now, I have no doubt that any of you can just go and put this in your calculator, but the idea is for us to kind of come up with a strategy or technique that's going to allow us to find uh, sums that look like this, but are much, um, that are much more complicated or have more numbers, ones that would not allow us to take out our calculator. So let's first try something that we know. All right, let's see if Gauss's method works on this. So I'm referring to... For those who uh, haven't seen my other videos, I'm referring to a technique we learned in a previous video. So Gauss's method would say, well, this is 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64. But it's also 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2. And so he would have us add these, and I'd get 2s is equal to 68 plus 36 plus 24 plus 24 plus um, 36 plus 68. And so hopefully now you notice what's different about this sequence of numbers when you compare it to the other ones we did using Gauss's method. These are all not the same. So we can't use Gauss's method because Gauss's method only worked when we had the same number occurring once we added these paired numbers together. So these are not the same. So that means we can't really use Gauss's method for this. So we're going to have to come up with something else, or rather, we're going to have to adopt the strategy that Euclid used. So here's what Euclid noticed. He noticed that these numbers can be written as, well, this 2 is just 2 to the first power. This 4 is 2 to the second power. That 8 can be written as 2 to the third power. The 16 can be written as 2 to the fourth. The 32 is 2 to the fifth and the 64 is 2 to the 6th. And so what Euclid said was, well, I just dotted that i twice. So you can ignore that. Um, he said, well, I'm going to start off by calling the sum s equals 2 to the 1st plus 2 to the 2nd plus 2 to the 3rd plus 2 to the 4th. Okay, so he still wrote out all the terms and called it S. But what he did next was actually kind of brilliant. He said, I, I know a way I can kind of shift these numbers over one, one column, sort of. So what I mean by that is he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply this sum by 2. So I'm going to take this S, I'm going to times it by 2. I'm going to double the sum. Now, if you double the sum, that means you're multiplying everything by 2. So just, again, we're going to use the distributive property here, but I'm kind of glossing over it, so I want to, I want to be sure. Let, let's say, just for example, is F, if s equaled, you know, um, um, 4 plus 6 plus 8, then 2s would be 2 times 4 plus 6 plus 8, right? And I'd have to distribute that 2 to each of those terms. So if I do that here, I'm multiplying this 2 to the 1st times 2, but that makes it 2 to the 2nd. I'd be multiplying this 2 squared times 2, but that's going to make it 2 to the 3rd. I want to multiply the 2 to the 3rd times 2, but that's going to make it 2 to the 4th. So I'm basically getting every single number on the list to kind of move over one unit here, or one, one column. Now, if I multiply 2 to the 6th times 2, it's going to become 2 to the 7th. So I get sort of get this added 2 to the 7th column. And now what he's going to do is he's going to subtract these numbers, subtract these two sums rather than add them. And so what you get is this is 1s minus 2s. 
So that is negative 1s when you subtract. And 2 to the 1 minus 0, there's nothing here, it's just 2 to the 1. And then all these terms subtract out to produce 0. Into the last one I have 0, so I'm going to put a 0 here even though you don't need to. 0 minus 2 to the 7 is going to give me negative 2 to the 7. And now I'm almost there. I'm just going to divide by negative 1. And I get that s equals 2 to the 1st minus 2 to the 7th divided by negative 1. So a pretty brilliant move on his part. Um, again, we haven't turned this into a number, but notice that it's, this is a rule that's going to work um, anytime we can express our terms as powers of one number. So these terms are all expressed as powers of two. If we can do that, we can use this sort of shift method to, uh, to, uh, to get these sort of inner terms to, to cancel out. And this method will work. So just to finish this off, if you wanted to uh, rewrite this, when you divide by negative one, that's ultimately going to allow you to sort of switch the order of those top terms. And 2 to the 7th, I believe, is 128. I'm going to minus that 2. And I'm going to get my final answer of 126. All right, so a couple of things to recognize in this example. First is that Gauss's method doesn't work for this type of problem. But we do have a new method uh, provided by Euclid, which will work, okay? You will need to make sure you express the terms as powers of one number if they're not expressed like that already. So try the next slide on your own.